about 90% of it will go to Quebec and about 10% of it will go to this province. That's the Upper Churchill. Forward along. In 1969, Joey Smallwood oversees a deal that gives Hydro-Quebec the right to buy most of the power generated from the immense Churchill Falls project. The 65-year-old deal expires in 2041. Quebec makes $28 billion, this province, $2 billion. The belief at the time was electricity rates would fall. Instead, they rose. Newfoundland and Labrador loses every court action it launches to try to get Quebec to renegotiate the deal. Over the years, several premiers criticized Quebec to no avail. After Danny Williams comes to power, he puts energy, self-sufficiency and finding a way around Quebec at the top of his political agenda. A change in the way we think about energy. Nalcor Energy is created. The shock for me as a provincial leader is the sense of greed and arrogance and entitlement displayed by Quebec after, quote, milking Newfoundland dry, in the words... In a major speech in Ottawa, Williams slams the deal with Quebec. Three months later, the plan for the Muskrat Falls project on the Lower Churchill is born. Price tag, $6.2 billion. With the completion of the Lower Churchill deal, it is time for new leadership and new ideas. In a surprise move, Danny Williams resigns. Kathy Dunderdale takes over and brings the PCs to a majority government. Dunderdale uses an amendment to block the Public Utilities Board from scrutinizing Muskrat Falls and determining if it is the lowest cost project possible. Aboriginal leaders share their fears about what rising methylmercury levels will do to their food system. Dunderdale gives Muskrat Falls the thumbs up and construction starts. Nalcor's CEO Ed Martin announces the project costs have risen to $7 billion, claiming that first power will flow as scheduled in 2017. A year later, Martin adds another 10% to Muskrat's costs. It's now at $7.65 billion. You know, no, it's not a crisis, and we're not in a crisis at the moment. After rolling power outages and blackouts, Kathy Dunderdale resigns as Premier. Liberal Dwight Ball defeats the Tories in the next year, and five months later, Nalcor's CEO Ed Martin announces his departure, and Nalcor's board resigns en masse hours later. You know, everything is underway and happening and developing, so I'm feeling comfortable that this is the time. The change of government reveals Muskrat Falls costs are $4 billion higher. The total, $11.4 billion. In my opinion, the Muskrat Falls project was not the right choice for the power needs of this province. The original analysis did not reflect a complete picture of the costs, risks and obligations based upon Newfoundland Labrador taxpayers and ratepayers. Nalcor's new chair, Stan Marshall, says the project never should have been started, but it's too late to scrap it. A year later, Marshall announces the cost is higher again, up another $1.3 billion to a total of $12.7 billion, more than double the original estimated cost. Marshall says the mega project is worse than that 1969 deal with Quebec. Three months later, at a Liberal fundraiser, Premier Dwight Ball announces there will be an official inquiry and widely respected Judge Richard LeBlanc is appointed Commissioner of the Muskrat Falls Inquiry.